Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 285 of Weekly Poker Hand. Is that right? That sounds like a lot of Weekly Poker Hands. If you want to go back and watch or listen to any of them, they are available on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pokercoaching. Also on the Poker Coaching Podcast with Jonathan Little if you want to listen to them. So, it's lots and lots and lots of free content available for you. Today, and for the next few weeks, we're going to be reviewing some hands from an exciting 10-25 game from Best Bet Jacksonville. I was actually scheduled to play this tournament, but I was still in the main event. I did not cash. So I didn't get to play this exciting game, and I didn't cash the main event. That's a bummer. But now, they let me review the hand. So, thanks to Best Bet Jacksonville for that. Let's take a look at this hand that really just deals with a preflop scenario, but it's an interesting one for a few reasons. First, here's Frank. Frank has pocket jacks under the gun, and he elects to limp. Now, I did not know what to expect out of this game, but from talking with a few other players, like, oh, you really need to get in that game, as in, you know, bust your chip stack immediately in the main event and run over there and play, um, because apparently it was a wild game. So knowing that, I would still just raise it up with the pocket jacks, Notice the players are playing very deep stacked. Um, Frank is the shallow stack here with only 400 big blinds. <laughs> so clearly um, we're playing very, very deep, right? And if you are not comfortable playing big pots, well, don't buy in deep. I'm not sure if they had a minimum buy-in at this table, but hey, if you're not comfortable playing big pots with pocket jacks, maybe buy in for 2,500 bucks and then just jam it all in there, right? After, you know, you're raising it three bet and four bet, then you just put your money with Jackson and pray you win. That is A-OK. -okay. A lot of people view that as um, bingo poker. If you're playing against loose, aggressive, splashy players who will call your all in with literally any two cards, you're just gambling. Yeah, well, if you're just gambling with 60% equity or 65% equity, sign me up. Anyway, Frank decides to limp. I probably would have raised, but whatever, limping's fine. And now George, directly behind him with pocket fours, makes it $200. So fours are usually handy you just want to see a flop with. Um, you don't really want to be raising the small pairs in general. And small pairs are actually very, very vulnerable hands when you are playing deep stack. Because what happens is every once in a while, you're going to get set over set. And when you're set over set, you are just on the hook for all of your money, right? And when you make a set against someone, usually it is two pair or more likely an over pair and an over pair is not going to pile in 400 big blinds right so what's going to end up happening is even though you have a hand that typically has implied odds it actually starts to have reverse implied odds to some extent when you are going to be out of position playing very deep stacked especially once you start to build the pot already which is what's happening when george makes it 200 so i would have just lent behind if i was in george's shoes and then around to tony who took second in the world series main event I think two years ago, he has King Jack offsuit in the cutoff seat. We are playing shorthanded here. And with King Jack offsuit, I think you only have two options. You can either fold or three bet. King Jack offsuit is a great hand to three bet with because it has two blockers, making it more difficult for either uh, George or Frank to have a good hand or the players yet to act, right? It's more difficult for the players yet to act or the limper or the razor to have kings. Ace, King, and Pocket Jacks. So, even though we see that Jax is here this time, I think uh, this is certainly a spot where Tony can justify 3-betting. If he does 3-bet, I'd make it something like 600 to 700, something like that. You are going to get called by George a lot of the time, but that's fine. He's out of position, right? He's going to check the flop a lot of the time and then just fold to a continuation bet. If you do happen to get 4-bet preflop, holding King Jack offsuit, just fold, right? Now, if George really is insane, then um, you know maybe you should not be three betting in the first place. Maybe you should just fold and wait for slightly better spots. But my default plan in this spot is to go ahead and put in the three bet because if um, George is just going to relentlessly four bet and make it you know twenty three hundred dollars a ton, that's fine. You just get to be patient and wait for good cards. All right, Shane folds pocket fives, which I think is fine, and back around to Frank with his pocket jacks. So he limped, got raised to eight big blinds, okay? And then that raise got re-raised to 24 big blinds. So what do you do with Jax now? 
Well, going back to what I said, if we were playing shallower stack, like 100 big blinds, pop the money in, no problem. Just go all in. It's nice and easy. So that would certainly be what I would do if I was shallow. But playing $11,000 deep, you can't just go all in. So his options are now to call, which, you know, it's kind of rough out of position because in this scenario, George in the middle may put in the four bet. George may make it $3,000 and now you know, Frank just has to fold. So that's bad. Even if he does call and George calls, Pocket Jacks are still going to be behind Tony every once in a while, right? So this is a pretty bad spot for Jacks, and I think you're probably supposed to just fold. Um, to be fair, I don't play a whole lot of you know, 400 big blind deep cash game pots out of position. Um, whenever I'm in these scenarios, typically if I do expect to face a lot of aggression and I'm not really sure how to respond, I'll just buy in shallow to the game, right? And you may say, how can you know that until you sit down? Well, you can pay attention, right? You can observe the table before you start playing. You can realize, hey... There's one guy at the table with $30,000 $30, of my direct left. Maybe I don't want to be playing deep stacked against someone who's going to be in there playing pots against me, right? So in this scenario, I definitely think if Frank was playing purely to make the most money possible, he probably should have played shallower stacked. Um, anyway, here we are. Now that we're in the spot with Pocket Jacks facing a Wee Limp, we got raised to 200 and they get re-raised to 600. Just fold. It's unfortunate, but I would just fold the Jacks here. He does fold. You may say, why not uh, put in the four bet himself with the jacks? Because then if um, George or Tony happens to have a nut hand, Frank's just in terrible shape. So super, super bad spot. All right, back to George. He has to put in 400 more. He should probably call here with the pocket fours. Now he is against only one player. If he does get a set, uh, he's less likely to be set over set because he's against only one guy. So I don't mind the call at this point playing $12,000 deep against Tony just to try to flop a set. So now on the flop comes 10, 9, 7. George checks. Tony's going to make a continuation bet with some of his range. He has to be careful actually betting too frequently here. This is a spot where George's range should connect very well with these middle high connected cards. But Tony does have a hand that very obviously wants to bet. The hands that want to bet in this scenario are going to be King Jack, Queen Jack, maybe Ace Jack. Um, Ace 8 suited if he has it, right? These are all hands that have uh, not a lot of showdown value, but they can get some better hands to fold, like pocket fours. And they also have outs to improve to a very strong hand if they do get there. So I definitely like the bet from Tony. He likes to bet 800. Actually, it's maybe 600. Can't exactly tell. I think he bets 600 into the 1200 pot and gets a quick fold. So very, very nice hand from Tony. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. I have a lot more exciting hands from this cash game that took place at Best Bet Jacksonville. Thanks again to them for letting me use their footage. If you all want more educational poker content from me, head over to my site, pokercoaching.com. There you can get a completely free trial membership. And if you really want to take your game to the next level, check out my premium version that I launched recently. You can find full details for that at pokercoaching.com premium. Good luck in your games, have fun, and I'll talk to you next time.